Hello and welcome to the Goomba Parade, another uh, new tutorial for Civex 2 and Luma Luma. Uh, in this episode we're going to look at how to make uh, NPC AI, like variables that are specific to an NPC, and uh, how we can like, use that to make interesting behavior, which works per NPC, uh, even if like one despawns or uh, a different one is halfway across the level to make sure that only the NPCs relevant do the right thing. So what I have right now is a little bit of a Goomba parade, uh, where each Goomba kind of bounces every second, and uh, one thing you'll notice is that they all bounce like in unison. So one thing I actually want to do is I want to move like the section a little bit further to the right so that stuff can also spawn in, uh, and I have this Goomba over there who, which just kind of like uh, hangs out in nothingness, and then when I go over there, he starts bouncing. He just did like two bounces at once. That was pretty rad. <clears throat> but um, my code for that so far looks like this. Uh, I don't need the ceiling anymore, but uh, I have a jump timer, and I increment the jump timer, and if it's greater than 65, I'm gonna reset it. And if it's uh, zero, I'm gonna uh, make the NPCs jump a little bit. Uh, simple stuff. Uh, but since there is a global jump timer, uh, it just kind of applies to all the NPCs, which if you're going for a uh, new Super Mario Bros experience is awesome, but uh, I want to have something that is specific to each NPC individually. So this is where uh, loading PNPC comes into. Local PNPC is required to load a library PNPC. <coughs> PNPC stands for Persistent NPC or Permanent NPC and um, makes it so that we can save stuff to the NPC uh, across frames. Because we right now just have to uh, go over for loop and do stuff to them in that frame, but with PNPC we can like save variables to the NPC so that they keep track of them over a frame. NPC is pnpc.wrap NPC. We'll wrap the NPC and figure out which NPC in the scene it is and uh, give us the NPC back which um, has an additional table in it, namely a table called data. If npc.data.timer um, is nil to check if we already initialized it, then uh, npc.data.timer is zero. Now we have a timer tied to this specific NPC, and to make this a little bit easier to follow, I'm going to print the timer. Uh, I need to get a reference to our camera. That'll give us the timer at the NPC's coordinates, and uh, now I'm not going to use jump timer for this, but I'm going to say npc.data.timer is NPC data timer plus one, just like in the first uh, episode where we did actual code, we're just going to increment the timer. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and say if this modulo 65, so that it happens every 65 frames, is zero, then we're going to move uh, the NPC up by a little bit. So, <clears throat> oh no, an error because I used V instead of NPC. Uh, habit. I'm sorry. So, now we have this timer going up. It goes up in uh, increments of uh, in the increments of 65. The uh, Goomba starts jumping, and as you can see, the other Goomba is now out of sync with the uh, other ones, and this one is out of sync as well. So they're all happy individually, and uh, don't need really to rely on their friends in order to be happy. So one of them actually despawned, uh, and an interesting thing about uh, NPCs in Spabex is that uh, despawn NPCs are still caught by NPC.get. So you can still like manipulate what is going on with them in uh, order to like uh, reset variables and stuff that are only one time. And as you can see, um, the timer keeps ca counting up. It's like at 3000 now. And even earlier when we scrolled one on screen, uh, he already had the timer going. And that guy too also is back at 3,600. Um, <clears throat> one thing you'll notice is actually that all these numbers are the same. So right now the um, 
AI is kind of like persistent across cycles. If the NPC despawns and then respawns again, it kind of continues where it left off, so to speak. Uh, and it never really left off anywhere. So what we can do is we can um, check for different stuff before we do our code. So one thing we want to check for is one of the mem offsets, of course. Uh, because why is this one not a variable yet? I don't know. But the uh, point is, it's a very important one if you're doing this kind of stuff. If npc mem 0x12a field word is greater 0, then we want to execute our code. This is the despawn timer. Uh, it is above 0, like between 180 and 0, uh, 180 and 1, uh, when the NPC is spawned, and it's 0 or minus 1 if it's despawned. So now this guy, they all have different times, and as you can see, one despawned, but uh, the timer is no longer visible because uh, it's already like reset its position, but uh, it doesn't have. Um, it doesn't count up anymore. It doesn't draw the timer anymore. So if I go off screen a little bit and go back, he will still he will be there again, and he will still have his like 400 uh, something something timer. So one thing I want to do to like change that is uh, else like if it's despawned, NPC .data .timer is zero. <clears throat> to reset our variable and uh, begin the cycle anew, just so to speak. So these guys are going to walk left. Uh, one of them is going to despawn, I think. Yep, uh, that guy's gone, and I'm going to go back a little more, and come back on screen, and you see that uh, one of them has like the 1000, and the other one has like a 100, which uh, keeps in incrementing again, uh, and this guy also just kind of reset its entire cycle. <coughs> so we uh, succeeded in making the variable uh, tied to the NPC and uh, also reset on despawn. Uh, the checks here are not quite uh, sufficient yet, for uh, certain reasons uh, you can blame Redigit for most of them. Uh, like for example, if I were to make a generator it would just crash, uh, which is something we're working on, but um, is currently not quite a thing yet. So if we have a generator, a projectile generator, so to for example, we'll just immediately like get uh, an error because data is null because our NPC is a generator. So if NPC mem 0x64 field bool, or rather if not that, so that we don't get generators, let's just only run our code over NPCs of this ID which aren't generators. So now we can have our little generator, he kind of shoots up and he bounces in the air and uh, dies because his friend uh, came up and did the thing. So uh, maybe one thing we still want to change here about this is um, we want to change this so it's not modular but rather a greater or equal 65 uh, then change the speed y only if uh, npc dot collides block bottom and we want to npc dot data timer is zero so to reset it so that our code uh, doesn't like get out of sync. So now uh, that guy go will go up, it will go over 65, but it will not uh, bounce until it hits the ground again, which is uh, funnily enough also something it does from the generator already, but uh, either way it then goes along the bottom. An alternative solution would be to um, only increment the timer if the NPC collides with the bottom, with the ground. So if I move this stuff over here to make sure all of it only runs when he is on the ground, then we will see that uh, the timer will stay at zero, and then start incrementing to one, and then to 65, and then it's zero again when in the air. Uh, and now they are, as a result, uh, on the ground for a little bit longer before jumping. I want to do one more uh, little thing here um, before I cap this off, which is to add a second variable to our Goombas to change their behavior a little bit. So <clears throat> I want to actually like keep track of a little table here. Bounce table, which um, is just like a table with four entries, which ha which each, each have a bounce height of like two uh, and a timer 
set of 20. Bounce height of 2, timer set 20, bounce height of 5, and timer set of 100. Uh, of like 240. Let's do it like that. Um, so this is a table of tables, um, which are like four tables that just kind of do their own thing. Uh, NPC.data state uh, is what I'm going to introduce, and it's going to start at 1. Uh, what it will do is it will go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, and it will look at uh, what kind of bounce physics uh, I want to have. So uh, if data.timer is greater than uh, bounce table npc .data .state .timer set. So if uh, our timer exceeded the expected uh, timer set for that state, I want to actually change this to that, uh, then we are going to set npc speed y to bounce table npc.data.state dot bounce height. Actually the negative of that because we want to go up and not down because up is negative in some bugs and we reset the timer and we set npc.data.state it's npc.data.state plus one and uh, if npc data state is 5, then we're going to set back to 1. So that we don't like go out of range, because last time uh, I made the player like have the Tanuki suit, then the big power-up, then the small power-up, and then Lua just kind of crashed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to like loop back around. So this is going to go up to 240, and then he's going to bounce, 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 and then do a big bounce. <laughs> A very simple uh, alteration to uh, the simple bounce code, but uh, I hope you see what uh, kind of shenanigans I was going for here. Uh, in Precisely, it's kind of like an approximation of what our winged friend over here is capable of. So I think I got the numbers all wrong. Yeah, it takes a much longer time for him to like bounce up. And uh, the time is a little bit different, so I'm going to change this to like 4, 4, 4, and 120. <clears throat> Just to see like how much closer I can get. Yeah, that was pretty cool, right? So this is like uh, a very simple NPC to uh, make with just the basics of PNPC. Uh, but it showcases very well like what kind of shenanigans are uh, easily creatable if you make your own NPCs with like your own variables. Uh, of course, I can't stress enough that it's important uh, that you know what's going on in your code. Um, if you like ever keep lose track of your code, uh, make sure to like go through it to see what's going on. Keeping really descriptive variable names is very important. Uh, what I'm doing is probably not the best job at that, but uh, of course you can um, go here and uh, say all my timer variables are now called uh, bounce timer, and uh, this is going to be called bounce state to make it even more descriptive, uh, and this could be called timer limit. <laughs> uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, often you want to find like a mix between descriptiveness and uh, length, so that you don't have to type like 5 million uh, letters in order to get your uh, stuff where you want it to be. Another really helpful uh, way to get uh, yourself to understand your code uh, after you've written it is to add comments with a double dash, uh, which for example above this line you can say if we want to skip all generator NPCs because they're nasty and will crash. Uh, then you'll know what uh, this one did back when you first wrote it, or this one here for the off-screen check. Um, and another thing uh, you want to do, of course, is uh, if you have any code that is unused, uh, you can get rid of it. For example, we didn't use that anymore. And uh, the text.print is probably also no longer necessary, but if you ever find yourself in a situation where you don't know what's going on, it's always helpful to use uh, printing functions uh, miss.dialog2 for like the dialog window um, to 
see where your code goes wrong. Um, very helpful to go through it from top to bottom, see what should happen and see what actually does happen. So yeah, this is uh, the basics of PNPC. It's um, basically like using variables, but now the variable is uh, as a child of npc.data. So this is very close to also how tables work in themselves, because npc is basically a table uh, with just special functionality. Um, so I hope you learned something today, and uh, I'll see you next time.